Welcome to another episode of Bringing Down the Grindhouse, a podcast where we discuss horror and media. And, and tonight, tonight, grab your wrap and turn them in for like a two dollar raise. Because we're talking about Willie's Wonderland. Wonderland. I'm Mur. <laughs> I'm just Stevie. <laughs> and I'm Jonathan. I was expecting you to say I'm Mitch. I'm Mitch. I know, just because <laughs> it is. So, so we're one down yeah. today. Mitch, Mitch decided to see his girlfriend tonight. Whoa. <laughs> wow. Getting it. <you>, no, I <laughs> don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this next half hour, we're going to talk about Mitch's sex life. <laughs> <laughs> as well as some animatronics. Oh, geez. Same thing. I, what? <laughs> 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 We're talking about oh, Willy's man. Wonderland. This is a movie that came out this year. <laughs> Wait, it did? Yeah. <laughs> Holy fuck, this has been a long this year. <laughs> <laughs> when did this well, come out? The year's almost up, so yeah, it has been kind of long. I know, that's what I'm saying, though. <laughs> it came out the beginning of this year. 2021 has been like the longest fucking year. It's been painfully slow. Yeah. So, Willy's Wonderland is a comedy horror movie starring Nicolas Cage. But it is released on February 12th of 2021 this year. It's also available on Hulu currently. Uh, Hulu's always got the goods. They got the goods. But I'm going to go into some production notes before we get into some analysis. Let's get this out of the way. It was directed by Kevin Lewis, and it was a screenplay from Geo Parsons. Uh, basically, it has a bunch of low-tier actors that not a lot of people know, but I'm going to name them anyways. Emily Tosta, Rick Reitz. Chris Warner, Kai Cadlick, Christian Del Grosso, and many others. <laughs> and many others. I'm this dead. sounds like you were listing off the fucking problems that medications will give you. You know those those commercials like if you suffer uh, from melodizioma. Do, do you need to take melodizioma? <laughs> you, uh, like uh, some of the symptoms might include death. And you're like, oh wow, okay. <laughs> death. So- Stomach aches and constipation. <laughs> 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 Yo, dead ass, they'd be like, you might just start bleeding profusely, but it's okay. From your anus. If you are, please consult a medical physician. <laughs> <laughs> What's hilarious is that originally I thought that they were just saying it really quick, but they just recorded and speed it up. And I'm a fucking idiot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, the weed is one of those things that you just don't know. It, it's always the sweepstakes giveaway oh my God, like, rules. Dude. I'm sorry, I'm going way off track, but I got to tell you the story. This was when <laughs> fucking me and Justine, me, so yeah, we were, yeah. remember when, I, remember when we were talking about like raisins? <laughs> <laughs> Holy okay, shit. Okay, let me explain. So I didn't know fucking raisins were just shriveled up grapes. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I didn't know that for a long time. <laughs> you fucking kidding me? I'm not kidding. I was like damn near 30 <laughs> before I figured that out. You were also damn near 30 when you found out cherries grew on trees. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Wait, no. This is more reasonable. Tell me that you didn't think cherries just grew in a bush or some shit. Like, doesn't that make sense in your head? But don't you remember George Washington chopping down the cherry no, tree? No, because I didn't pay attention cherry to school. Blossom Fuck George tree. Washington. Anyway. Cherry blossom tree. Yo, that's a creepy story, though. Like, what if you just came home and your kid is like deadpan faced looking at you being like, did you cut down the cherry tree? And he's like. Yeah, I fucking did it. No, he hey, said, he's holding a fucking axe. Like, what the fuck? I cannot tell a lie. Oh, that's what it was. That's what it was. He's like, anyway, fucking so beyond whatever the fuck I was talking about. But anyway, go ahead. I think <laughs> we're fuck. talking about who started this movie. I, I am stunned. <laughs> Dude, no, literally didn't know that. Didn't know fucking cucumbers turned into pickles for a long time. Oh my I God. found that out like in my mid twenties. Like this is like shit well, I did you don't not know. Nothing about fruit, do you? No. Real shit. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to go more into notes real quick. Yo, uh, you got to talk about that failed ass budget in box office. Yeah. That's sad. Hold on. I'm getting there. <laughs> We're getting there. We're getting there. Oh, man. Uh, the cinematography was done by David Newbert. It was edited by Ryan Liebert. Music is by Emoy, who also voice acts for willie the the main bad guy yeah he also <laughs> composed all the music like 30 tracks of original music that sound like they're from like the early 90s and 80s wait does this include the like head shoulders it also includes songs? all those songs oh as wild well. he did like his own rendition of those songs yeah. i like the, the 80s montage pinball scene yes the yeah. music great. for that was great right and i thought it was an actual like song from the 80s until he started saying something about willie's wonderland Willy. i was like yo this soundtrack is yeah tight. Right. Like, this soundtrack slaps yeah so how do i so, get a final of this shit so not only did they like voice act to be willie they also composed a whole hour's worth of soundtrack for the movie 
Um, and this was the production companies are Landmark, Baffin Media, Saturn Films, JD Entertainment, and Landafar, and distributed by Screen Media. Uh, so this movie had a budget of five million dollars, and it's like we're in we were in like really bad COVID times at the beginning of the year, so the box office doesn't surprise me at a very uh, meek four thousand. Four hundred thousand forty-five thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah. Did they actually do a wide release for this movie? Nah. I don't think so. No. So what happened was that it was supposed to be released. They were ready for it to get released. People were stoked on this. They also had a huge cult following because people are like, "Yo, this is Five Night at Freddy's. Like, we get to see a live action of this." And then right when they were about to release it, they're like, "JK, everything's getting shut down." So they didn't get a chance to re- like release it worldwide, and they had to do limited release along with a straight to video release which just just killed it like yeah. they didn't get to have any money for it what a shame people would have loved this movie yeah, oh, yeah. i mean if, people yeah. do love this they're movie. considering re-releasing it but I hope they do. but i don't think it'll get much traction because it's been out you know what'd so be long. cool all right whoever is in charge of pr for this movie hire me okay <laughs> so it's based off of five nights at freddy's right. right what if they do a special thing where they only show it for five nights in theaters I don't know. I feel like people would be really Damn, into that. That would be uh, pretty cool. I'm very much a sucker for limited availability. Like, if they're like, ah, there's only five of these things. I'm like, I need it. I need yeah. that thing. So I could totally see people being like, I got to see it. Just the like the five nights. Uh, What's that new one? Uh, Titani, Titane, whatever. They showed it only for a few days. Yeah. And then, and then took it away. And now they're going to send it to DVD. But I was like, fuck, I missed like the two day window that it was in theaters. The day that I went to go see The Green Knight, I was wearing my black pink shirt. And they yeah. I the black that. pink fucking movie one day only. Yeah. And then, like my friends were laughing at me like you wore the shirt and you didn't go see the fucking movie. I'm like, no, I'm going to go see The Green Knight with y'all. Yeah, fuck yeah. And I felt like such a poser. Oh, no. <laughs> Black uh, Pink is mad at you n- for that. I know. Not to mention, they also, like, Nick Cage got onto this movie because he likes the script so much that he even put his own money into it, where he yeah. was like, I'm going to be a producer and I'm going to be in it. And we already have talked about him several times on the podcast. This is the third iteration of the new and improved he's, Nicolas Cage horror line. I'm so glad he's like, I need to do some weird experimental horror shit. Like, well, like I feel like he's kind of going that direction anyways. Right. Because there's that one period of time where he was just an absolute meme. Oh, yeah. And then he started coming out with all these weird-ass movies he was in. I mean, there was that whole joke where it's like, Nick Cage, will you do this movie? I'm in. <laughs> he's, like, well, he's like Samuel Jackson. He will not say no to a movie. Or what is his name? Danny Trejo? That yeah. dude said like he get, he does every movie he gets asked to do. Like He's been in so many movies, it's nuts. I can't even like go through all of them. <laughs> Even if he's just on screen for like four seconds. Right. He's, but yeah, like, fuck he's it. usually just playing himself. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. He's playing himself. It's like, yeah. Who, who else does that shit? Denzel Washington. Um, Denzel, that's who we were talking about. There's a whole period in like the early 2000s where Denzel Washington was in every single action movie, but it's just him. Like he doesn't play any different character. He knows what he's doing. He's the action hero. He never loses. That's it. Like that's him in every movie in the 2000s. But got, yeah, Nick Cage. Got is, typecast it. Is like in this new era it began with mandy in like 2018 and then we got color out of space in 2019 i'm pretty sure amazing yeah yeah it was 2019 i think what was that one weird ass movie that we watched that we couldn't even get through like 30 minutes of it was like the kung fu movie. oh i was so upset it was the the uh, oh shit ghosts of god damn it i don't remember the name it's the newest nick cage movie that he did and it was just it wasn't even bad good. It was just like, this is just awful. I don't know what's going on. The like, they spent all their money on their costumes, but not on the location. So you're just <laughs> like, you know, when you get like overdressed yeah. and you show up at a party and then you're just like, wow, this place like is like wearing whack. a ball gown to Applebee's. Yeah, it was just like they did, whoever did their set design. Uh, um. Anyway, yeah, that was upsetting because I was expecting it to be a cool trip like the other ones, but it was not. Ah, uh, Prisoners in Ghostland. That's it. Yeah. I got through like half of it and I was like, I can't watch this shit anymore. No, nah, not even half. It was like Dude, 30 I, minutes. I can't remember the last time I quit watching a movie. Like that was rough. The D&D movie. Oh, that's right. Yeah. We fuck, yeah, we hella quit on that movie like halfway yeah, through. But as you should. <laughs> the, the only thing that kept me around was, uh, was his name Jeremy Irons? Yeah. Yeah, that was, that was kind of it. <laughs> so did you guys 
as kids ever go to Chuck E. Cheese? Yeah, Duh. definitely. Duh. I had all of my elementary school birthday parties at Chuck E. Cheese, oh and I gosh. sat in the fucking animatronics room, and oh, I wow. cheated at ski ball and got my little tickets, and never got anything cool. Wait, how do you how do you that. cheat at ski ball? So before they didn't put cages on the ski. Oh, so you used to just like. Yeah, so I just started walking up and putting them in the highest one. Damn, and bro. Everyone was doing that, and like no one told us shit. But the next time I went back, they put cages up on them. That's hilarious yeah, that you, know, you just walked up. That was the thing. You'd always see kids just, okay, look around, go, run. Start handing them the balls, and they're just slam dunking Wild. in that 100 points. Dang, bro. I, to be honest, it never occurred to me that I could cheat at these games as a kid. Like I just was like, nah, dude, I just got to get really good at the like the technique. Of, of, of ski ball that's like i gotta get different. good this is gemini <laughs> versus taurus approach yo literally i was like no nah, dog i just gotta get the motion right and then i'm gonna get that hundred every time and i was like let's go let's fucking go <laughs> I, w- I would do both my favorite part though was uh if they ever been like hey you can't be up there i'd be like oh you know i'm sorry and as soon as they turn it back i'm right up there mm. uh, but i will say that i did consider stealing the prizes while while that dude was not looking behind the cash register. But, yeah, you, you would know. go all the way behind the counter. You're brave. Yeah. Well, see, the thing was is like so in Oceanside. You know what I'm talking about? The Chuck E. Cheese in Oceanside, the one that's across from like Ross or whatever yeah. the fuck that place is. So they have this like counter set up there where it's just open, like it has a little flippy door that you can go into. But if you're like five, you can just walk under that. Anyway, <laughs> there was a, the dude who used to watch it is, of course, a teenager who doesn't give a fuck about his job. So he'd go and leave or like go to the restroom or some shit like that. So I remember going back there and be like, yo, I can reach this. And so I was just like grabbing I mean, they it. They probably got security cameras, but I don't think they care. Yeah, but I didn't notice at that time, you know, I didn't think security cameras not in your mind as a kid to be like i'm about to jack some shit yeah it it only matters about the (laughs) naked eye it was hilarious though because i remember grabbing something going to my mom and be like yo check this out my mom's like where the fuck did you get that and she's like oh shit she's like did you just steal this and like (laughs) had to take it back and then the, the dude didn't even care he was like oh okay and then just put it back on the wall and i was like see you don't fucking care like let me just take it (laughs) she was like you can't be stealing shit off the walls and stuff so that was that was my my memory of chuggy cheese did you did you guys ever were you ever afraid of the animatronics yes i was afraid of the person in the suit the fucking giant rat walking around just chill you know i was always like because it don't it doesn't look like a nice suit it looks like like a cracked out (laughs) rat like he had a, a rough night I love all of the like popular media culture jokes about yes. fucking Chuck Mi- Cheese. Ch- I almost called him Mickey Mouse. <laughs> kind of the same. <laughs> can't, um, we can't talk no, about Chuck our Chuck Disney Cheese. overlords. <laughs> I didn't say anything about about Disney for legal. They're gonna reasons. send us a cease and desist letter. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Fuck off! But I think um, in uh, what's it? Simpsons. There is like some sort of cracked out rat mascot yeah, at some point. There is. And just tons of other movies. There's been different spinoffs of fucking Chuck E. Cheese. Put the mask back on, kid. Fuck off. Yeah. I <laughs> love Has a those. beer and a fucking cigarette in his hand. <laughs> just like, God. Yeah, I don't know. I was never afraid of Chuck E. Cheese, like the guy in the suit or like the guy in the band. It was always his other bandmates. No, that, same, actually. That were like a little creepy to <sighs> That's me. That's right, huh? I totally forgot Wait, about I that. I gotta look up what, what the animatronics for Chuck E. Cheese are yeah. now. They're Dude, very you know you can characters. like buy those things? Like, Dude, some people no. still Imagine have them. keeping one in your basement. Oh, <laughs> Just yeah. that in the, your basement. The only reason I know this is because there's a podcast I listen to and one of the hosts as a joke said that she was looking for an animatronic and this dude was like, no, nah, I'll legit sell you one. And she was like, I might buy it. And I was like, yeah. oh, my fucking God. That's like cursed shit. As oh, yeah. I was the fucking purple guy that was on the Let me see. What does it look come like? Here, come here. Come here. Oh, no. I know. I already know what you're talking about. I saw this. Wait, let me. Let me see I remember it. seeing the whole band one time. And I was like, this is fucking creepy. Like, yeah, as a, that fucking guy? Yeah, as a kid thinking it's yeah. creepy and then getting older and be like, wow, that shit is creepy. The fucking purple dude in yellow. Oh about? my lord! Yep, uh, that's, so, that's some repressed memories. So I know this, this movie... just unlocked a lot of shit. <laughs> that or the fucking racist ass Italian one they had. You know the fucking pizza Shh, chef. Yeah, you know what's funny though is that in the movie they had one that only spoke Spanish, and that shit yeah, was right? hilarious to me because he was just like, <laughs> "No, don't hit me in the balls!" Like, uh, what is it in Spanish? 
Uh, uh, oh god, what did he say? He's like, um, he's like, I know, no me pegas en los huevos, and he's yeah. just like <laughs> getting fucking beaten up. Yeah. He's just like, oh no, what's happening? That shit was hilarious. But you know, this doesn't help the idea of who's inside the suit because in the movie they're all like child murderers and pedophiles. Yeah. yeah. And it's like they're just like, you know what? Let's do fucking satanic ritual where we transfer our our consciousness to a fucking inanimate object. Man, I want to know where they got that grimoire. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. know what? Like, like that's like powerful magic. Like, where did you even? And they didn't even do anything really besides like drink they, some. They literally punch. drew a pentagram. Yeah, you know, it didn't candles. seem like that elaborate of a fucking uh, <laughs> uh, um, sacrifice. They no, that sounds like some eldritch terror shit. Yeah, yeah. right. So I was like, yeah, okay, but like you know. They didn't really need that much of an explanation, so they're just like, "Here's this like two minute I scene." I mean, given like the whole fucking movie, nothing really needs right. to make sense. I mean, Nicolas Cage didn't even say a word the whole movie. Somehow escapes the whole movie without saying a single word, and yeah. still one of Unless the better count, performances. Unless you count like him murdering someone and grunting while right. doing it, words, nah. but not really. It's more unga bunga sounds. I think it's a, it's an interesting thing because Nicolas Cage, his character, is driving a really nice car and like a dingy like southwestern area. right what the fuck they does he do for texas. a living texas yeah and <laughs> yeah <he's> dingy <laughs> i'm just kidding sorry <laughs> to our one patron <laughs> oh. in texas <laughs> man there ain't nothing in tech uh, anyway <laughs> oh, except shit. for anti-abortion laws anyways <laughs> oh, oh shit, shit. <laughs> shit. <laughs> it's, like, uh, it's like oh yeah that's right i forgot it's like 1960 there anyway <laughs> this guy's driving like a sick ass mustang <laughs> yeah back he's to like the mustang. killing it and uh he Get spiked with the, uh, right. the field hazards that like cops use. Ironically, the most fucked up part about this movie is that like they're just straight up trapping people. Yeah, because yeah. I realized after the fact that they obviously put those spikes there for a reason. Right. They're hoping to get some you know unbeknownst person, and they're like, "Oh yeah, you you could just you know pay for this, yeah. so we could fix your car." Also, I don't accept cash or car. Right. I don't accept card the fucking, or checks. Uh, the, what is it? The ATM doesn't work. And there's no Wi-Fi in the entire city, supposedly. Dang. No internet in the entire county. Bullshit. I call I call lies. But you know, um, he's I gonna drink caffeinated drinks while he does it, though. Yeah, I, I, that was great. I love the so running good. theme of him having this energy drink. No, it's, it's the fucking breaks and his take. breaks. It doesn't matter what he was doing. That clock goes off. He's stopping. Well, because Doug Dimmodome, the one who was trapping I everybody fucking love there that. the first time, he really does look like, like he has the same energy. No, honestly, and he was like, "Remember, take breaks, pace yourself." And he dead ass set like an hour every hour. His alarm would go off and oh, go play fucking ping ball. Has like a pinball montage <laughs> of like eighties so fucking movie. The pinball scene was uh, not supposed to be in the movie. Nicolas Cage just did that on his own oh wow they were, they they were, were filming, recording and i guess i guess they were like no this is great we should just make a pinball machine for this yeah so then the set designers got to crack in and took it apart and made a willie's wonderland fucking pinball machine shit so that's like that was like a thing that they made and you could probably get like right it, it was supposed to just be like i wonder who kept it yeah i want to know that too it was supposed to be just like oh there's an old pinball machine in the back whatever oh my god and he was just supposed to take soda breaks but then Nicolas Cage was like, Phew. yeah. And then they got their gears spinning as they do. He seems like the kind of guy who was actually like really good at pinball. Oh yeah. When oh, he totally. was younger and this transfers. He was definitely like a video game nerd you know? and like old school. Nerd, yeah. So he had to go to the arcade to play most of the games he wanted to. Can you imagine how weird it must've been to like, see, like meet him when he was younger. He's got to have been a weird kid. Yeah. Like, he's definitely one of those drama geeks. And then... I bet he was, like, tiny and really quiet. Right, yeah. And then, can you imagine just knowing him then and you see him get older and he's just, like, he's really good. <laughs> imagine <laughs> being the kid that probably bullied him. Fuck, I know, right? <laughs> I always wonder about that. When people. It's like the person who said no to Beyonce. Like when they were going to go to fucking prom together. Oh, can you man. imagine being that idiot? Who <laughs> 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 was just like, nah, dog. <laughs> <laughs> or any of Lady Gaga's past ex-boyfriends. Yo, it's weird as hell to see Lady Gaga without makeup, but like she's not ugly. She looks great without makeup and with makeup. So it's just like, because at first you saw just like her, her stage persona and then you got here? to see that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Sorry. <laughs> got way off. All uh, right, let's, let's curve this is, train. What I wanted to talk about was like 
there's some really good cinematography at work here. <laughs> I thought, yeah, there is. Um, I think one of my favorite parts is how much care and love he gives to like cleaning the pinball machine. Like he's like filling it up and he's like, he's like right. polishing everything. And like, you could tell he's like, Oh yeah. <laughs> like so that's funny. the, that's the emotion he conveys. I love that. Despite all of the carnage that took place in there, he still cleaned everything up at the end. Yeah. Yeah. He really that did clean everything spotless. up. Spotless. That's funny. And, and then halfway through, like, I mean, he's locked in there, so he has to either die to be sacrificed or, you know, deal with them. And he's not even freaking out when the first one comes alive. He's just like, this motherfucker hit me. Yeah, he's annoyed. <laughs> he's, like, really annoyed. And it's like, oh, God. It's like, to him, it's like, he's, I'm going to have to clean up a bigger mess now. Right. Which is not what and I was looking to really do. Which is really funny because I think it's, which one is it? Is it the, uh, which one is the first one? Oh, he kills the uh, turtle, right? No. I honestly don't remember. Oh, there's like fuck. five of them. Yeah, there's like five of them. I, I just remember the gorilla was second. Yeah, the gorilla was second. That shit was nuts. Oh my <laughs> god, bro! That no, nah, that-, that shit was bananas. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, I set myself yeah, up. For I just that imagine one. somebody in the background being like, "Yo, that shit is bananas." <laughs> and then <laughs> like, shit is bananas. and then they just go off into the song. B B A N A N A S. Oh my god. Bananas. B. Uh, fucking music for this though was amazing. Oh right! Like, it actually had a really good soundtrack. Um, this movie got shit on. Like, people really didn't like it. <laughs> I think it's probably has has to do with like the minor th- plot with like the kids. That just like I didn't yeah. care for at all. Uh, Killing it's kids. true. This movie could have survived without any of them. Uh, except for the one girl who like he ends up taking at the end. Yeah, I mean that was like the only character with depth. Yeah, um, it makes more sense though because you find out, oh, you know, her mom. Spoiler: her mom is is not actually her mom. Yeah, and then it like it's one of the well, families. Obviously, you think that white woman gave birth to that True. brown? True. Yeah, I was like, is she adopted? Like, what's going on? So the character in question is Liv, who's played by Ebony Toast, Emily Tosta. Basically, <laughs> they just stop it. Emily, like, Emily Tosta. Wait, uh, is this the the main character? Or are you talking about the other girl? This is this is the child character. Oh, okay. So like. I guess her parents were sacrificed at an earlier time. Yeah. In the movie. You actually saw them flashback. get sacrificed in the first scene of the movie. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's right. That's yeah, right. it's kind of fucked. It is really fucked. Um, it and was also sheriff- kind of weird to see them create uh, their like, teen characters. It was like an older dude who didn't understand teens anymore. Yeah. And, and then just wrote in this teenager. Yeah, and you got the thought, of course. Yo, he made her like quintessential 80s bimbo. Yeah, and it was, and it was I, like, I actually was hoping was she would really survive, cringe. but of course she died after having she sex, had sex on scene on the fucking place where they did their quote unquote satanic ritual. That's wild, dude. And then you got her dumb jock boyfriend who's kind of an asshole. And then you got the fucking nerd. That you dude got just the, wanted the, to the leave. The righteous pretty boy. Right. And then you got the main character. Yo, all I got to say I is uh, they didn't show any titties, so. I mean, I would hope not. Points I think off. I think they're in high school. Yeah. Should have made them college You wanted age. to see high school too? No. Oh. <laughs> Damn, I got back to the corner real quick. Oh. No. <laughs> that is wow. not. All right, I'm going to end this conversation and move on to the next thing. Yeah, what's your point of view, Mar? <laughs> you know what? Someone was watching when the fucking you want my point of view, right? Okay. Someone was that crocodile was fucking watching. Oh, he was totally watching. He was totally fucking getting he, off of that He shit. purposely didn't move. Yeah. So that they could start having sex first. Right. And then he could kill them. Yeah. I will say, though, girl girl has some pump in her. <laughs> she had that arch. Yeah, she, she had that she arch. Was she was doing. doing I'm fucking dead. What the hell? Okay, we digress. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, so there was uh, Willie the Weasel. Right. There's also Siren Sarah, who's actually played and voiced by a real person. That's not an animatronic. The, wait, the rest were legit animatronics? Yeah. They weren't people in suits. Well, some of them were. I, I'm talking about like like she was the only one voicing as oh, well oh, gotcha. as okay. acting. In. I was like, damn, bro. They had some <laughs> some gnarly <laughs> animatronics. That, that, yeah, that was, she does a bunch of acrobatics yeah, and stuff like that. She's yeah. like super flexible. It's cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I thought it was cool. I thought it was cool, too. Yeah. I mean, as a dancer, <laughs> you probably thought it was I'm cool. I'm dead. <laughs> you know what else is cool? Your mom. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Eddie. 
Uh, we have Cammy the Chameleon as well. <laughs> Yo, okay. All right. So, like, th- she was weird as fuck because she has that whole moment where she's like, you know, I'm not as, like, evil as these other ones. And then she just snaps that kid's neck. Yeah, straight up. And you're like, oh, fuck. <laughs> just... Yeah, she was like, I can teach you about the other side if you help me cross over. Snaps neck. Mm. Yeah, that was fucked. She was also able to change colors, which was very scary. Yeah, that was weird. It was kind of scary. Yeah. Like, to be able to blend in. Also, that dude's a fucking idiot. Oh, yeah. The one that tried to go with no, it. No, dog. You know, this is these are different. I believe it's commentary about how the righteous character and everything usually ends up dying because they make <laughs> decisions based off of their righteousness when they should go oh, based man. off of logic and reason. Yeah, you're right. Oh, they're acting friendly. This should be good. Dang. <laughs> also, we got Tito the Turtle. Oh, my God, dude. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> That's the is that is that the Spanish one? Yeah. Oh, he's man. wearing like a sombrero and everything. Fuck. You know, it's funny enough is it wasn't like like watching him like this wasn't racist, but it was hilarious that he only spoke Spanish. Yeah, it wasn't racist. I got to give props to that. It right. wasn't like overly exaggerated. It was just like, oh, it's Tito the Turtle. He yeah, Spanish. only speaks Spanish and, I, and somehow got out and on top of their car without <laughs> them noticing. And, like, steals the keys, too. And you're just like, what the fuck is happening? Yeah. Somehow they're able to get out of the thing. And that was what the townspeople were saying. That, like, if they didn't kill or, like, sacrifice people, people would be end up end up dying in their homes. Yeah, they would just leave the fucking place and go start killing people Which outside of the... Which sounds fucking nuts. Oh, uh, You know what that makes me think of? I told you about it, but I may have told Justine about it. Um, there's a kill in, in the movie Halloween Kills... Where a girl walks up to Michael Myers point blank with a gun and he's like in a car and he like kicks out the door and the gun turns and she shoots herself. That's fucking hilarious. And I was like, what? <laughs> I, like, it was so outrageous that I was like, I got taken out like straight out of the movie. I was like, are you fucking serious? <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, I know he's been doing some wild shit up until this point, but like really kicking out a door and then making someone shoot themselves. That so, shit was wild. So does he get a kill or earn assist in that point? I, yo, <laughs> I feel like it's an assist because like the 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 kick wasn't directly killing her. She yeah. just happened to like be close enough for the gun to turn, and then she yeah. fucking rack up a, a an assist on the kill count for <laughs> Michael Myers. <laughs> an assist on yourself. Kills. That's so fucked. Uh, we also got Nighty Night, who had the big ass fucking sword. Oh my oh, god, bro! Dude, there's one kid. He gets straight up penetrated, man. Yo, I'm I'm dying about the lady who just gets chopped straight in half. Oh, you're Willie. talking about the, the whack the ass police. sheriff. Yeah, the fucking so, Willie just comes out and goes wah, and like just, mm-hmm. like just half of her goes like flying just with his hand. Too. Yeah, that was shit was wild. But Apparently, like, he had razor lady, sharp claws. Mm-hmm. She's an interesting character. She kind of like made me look at the movie a little bit more like I don't know philosophically. I guess that there is actually some like hidden meanings behind this. It's not just complete bullshit of a movie. That's fair. right. You want to delve into that? Yeah. What What do you What do you mean exactly? Like, I mean, oh, sorry. I should mention the act actor in question here is Beth Grant's character as Sheriff Lund, who takes care of Liv's character after her parents are murdered by Willie. Yeah. Well, after she sacrificed her parents yeah. to Willie. Yeah. So this bitch made a deal with Willie. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like she's like pleading to it like we will give you three people a yeah year. and like here's my thing nicholas is nicholas cage's character who goes unnamed pretty much the entire movie i don't think he has a name might be he? just the guy he's just the guy the guy is clearly strong enough the to janitor. take out the yeah right the janitor he's strong enough to take out pretty much all the animatronics but she's still trying to stop him for some reason She's still trying to sacrifice him, but like everything would be over if he just let she just let him take care of business. Right. So yeah. my thing is, is that if given the opportunity, humans are willing to act out their violence vicariously through some other sort of medium, whether it be watching movies or in this case, sacrificing humans to the animatronic overlords. <laughs> right. That's an interesting take, because I always thought it was just about safety, but I never thought that it was just like, well, maybe th- Maybe the sheriff gets something out well, of this. Well, maybe at oh, first yeah. it was about safety, but I think at some point they almost enjoyed sacrificing people. Oh, yeah. Well, the two guys were for sure getting, like, cars, 
and yeah, like they were getting cars sh- like out shit of it. from them. I think they made another deal with Willie though, because they, also... they were gonna burn down the place. Uh, yeah, they also had this idea that the people that they were getting were like less than them. Yeah, like they're, they're like somehow cleaning up the community. Yeah, they thought they were like having people with quote unquote like let like bad morals. Like the, it, uh, there's one scene where they show like a punk couple. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, that's the epitome of bad morals. And like this is supposed to be like the bad kids or people who are like not supposed to be. Around. There's but then one you dude look like he was just family. homeless. In the beginning of it. Right, yeah. And that's just straight up because the fucking, all the guys who work there are pedophiles. Yeah. And child murderers. Yeah, I mean, you hear about the special back room and that just sounds awful. Oh my God, right? Yeah, that's when you're like, oh, this has got like really serious all of a sudden. (laughs) Yeah. That's not even talking about like the pizza temperature. (laughs) <laughs> you, ever, you ever saw that hour long video that someone made about Chuck E. Cheese's pizza temperature? Uh, yes. No. And it's, uh, I'm kind of afraid of Wait. what that pizza is made of. What? Tell me about it. So, if anyone doesn't know, I don't mean uh, Chuck E. Cheese sponsors. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't. I'm Yeah, I'm send me them free tokens. Yeah. Um, so this guy was like, I got this fucking pepperoni pizza and it tasted like rubber or like leather. And basically, he checked the temperature. It was nowhere near like eating safely like the safety measures for like heated foods so then eventually he get went to a widespread investigation across several uh chuck e cheeses across the nation and basically found that uh chuck e cheese was like taking pizzas that are old and putting them in like the fridge and then reheating them or like doing stuff to just make it so that they could extend the life of a pizza slice so they don't have to spend money on like uh materials Damn, you know you're struggling when you're trying to save money on making pizza. Bra, that made me gag a little bit. I'm just thinking about little me chowing down yep. on that fucking pizza. Yeah, it man. was it was better before though. Yeah, uh, I was gonna say at some point they actually were making fresh pizza. But here's that's the thing is, right now we're in a cultural shift where kids <laughs> don't really care about like arcades. Yeah, when, or like well, because they got video shit. games at home. Yeah, or on their like, phone. Early 2000s, like you had some like computer video games, but they weren't like that cool, you know? Yeah. So, so as- you had to actually go to an arcade for it. But now like no one needs, they literally have games on their phones. You know, you got an arcade with you everywhere. Right. And so now it's like, you know, your, your parent will be like, oh, you're playing skee ball on your fucking phone. Okay. I don't have to take you to this establishment. So then the prices get fucked because, you know, they can't keep the lights on so they have to cut corners with pizza and stuff like that and then kids get sick and then even more lawsuits happen but that's the thing we're seeing this cultural shift where it's not even the kids that want to go to chuck e cheese it's the adults who want to go to chuck e cheese and play fucking arcade games for nostalgic reasons but it's also kind of sad because in a way that's like their form of escapism right by going back into this uh place (laughs) that was significant to their childhood damn who knew this movie was gonna get that deep (laughs) yeah i i love the jurassic park arcade game and i wish i could find it and put it in my house fuck yeah (laughs) i'm pretty sure you can still buy one of them oh totally yeah you're talking about the one where like it's like enclosed yeah, with like the little like, jeep. Oh, on the, that's like you're in the jeep. Yeah, yeah, it would like come over. You'd sit in there. If you got in one that was fancy enough, it like moved. Shout okay, out to the Star okay. Wars one too. If yeah. you could get any old school arcade game in your house, which one would you get? Oh, um, shit. Uh, I don't even know what it's called, but it's kind of like an F Zero style game, where like you sat on it and it was like a bike. Ooh. Oh yeah, and like like it would actually like turn. You'd like tilt to one side, and the and the screen was like a wraparound kind of. So like it's like a half semicircle in front of you. So you would. It was like it was the coolest sci-fi game I think I could see in the arcade. Mm-hmm. Besides the fucking Time Crisis game, yeah, I where love you time like crisis. you just fuck it and the whole thing moves like as you're shooting. Oh, it. the recoil and the yeah, gun. it actually has some recoil on they it. You got like shotguns and yeah. grenade launcher buttons. Those are dope. Yeah. I'd Me? probably go with one of those. So I was I was thinking about it right now, and I was <laughs> thinking like it'd probably be something classic like the Jurassic Park one. But I remember what my favorite arcade game is now. That is like the House of the Dead. I don't yeah. know if I ever played that. It's with a basi- shotgun. Basically, like it's a it's a point point shooter where like you're shooting zombies and stuff. Everything dies within one hit, pretty much. Yeah. So it's basically just like they they show a scene, and then zombies and like demons will come out, and you just clear the stage, and they go to the next one. 
and oh, I think I remember that game. Yeah. yeah. So that one is always really nostalgic to me. I played on MDMA and that was a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, bro. Um, um, yeah. I think mine would probably be either Mortal Kombat or DDR. Ooh, hey. that DDR. But, uh, I have a fond memory of when I was in. I don't know how old I was, but I remember the mall around here still had an arcade in it. And I just started <laughs> smoking pot at the time. Nice. So uh, I got really high with my friend and we went in there and just got a fuck ton of quarters from the machine. And we played Mortal Kombat for like hours. And it was like the most fun I'd ever had because I I'd been to like arcades before. But like I was never really like a game person. Like I would just do like ski ball or something like that. Yeah, you're there to have like, like some casual fun. One of the vaguely similar to gambling sort of games yeah you know um, <laughs> like deal or no deal the yeah oh right? my god dude i forgot about that shit the only other one i can think of was uh this was when the the star wars episode one two and three were coming out when the first one came out shortly after they were still making arcade style games so you could find the pod racing mm. arcade game in, in the arcades and that shit was dope because yeah. you had the same setup that young oh, anakin yeah. had in his uh, uh, his pod racer, and so you could get into that, and it was like the same setup, and it's huge screen. That's the thing. Right there was there was that shift too. Um, Justine with the like dance dance revolution. That shit took the world. <laughs> no, yeah, it was really big. Um, <laughs> like early to mid two thousands. Right. I mean, the first time I ever saw a person like do really good and like was on expert, they have like their shirt is sweating. They're, they're playing the double pad. They're actually putting their hands on the bar, too. They're, yeah, yeah. The hands on the bars. They're doing backwards hits. I remember the game was so big that in my middle school PE class, well, one of the days, we'd like go into this room where they had a bunch of random stuff, like some exercise equipment and like a rock wall or like a little <laughs> rock wall. Yeah. And uh, But one thing they had, they had Dance Dance Revolution. Ooh, yeah. Oh, I found... <laughs> I remember dancing to some Sean Paul song on that. <laughs> That's great. And it was temperature. Temperature. Ooh, I danced to Coldplay. <laughs> you, what? Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, I, ha- I, ha- I had a Dance Dance Revolution pad for the Wii. And, like, my favorite fucking song to do was Clocks because it was the only one I could recognize. That's hilarious. Coldplay of all songs. I figured out what the arcade game was, the what? sci-fi one. It's called Stun Runner. Oh. It's, like, it's the it's the acronym. It's the S-T-U-N. It's a, it's a high-speed racing game in which players take control of a speed bike and must navigate a series of tunnels and other environments while encountering various types of enemies. It was made by Atari. Oh, cool. So I was I reckon I literally looked it up and recognized it just by the look. Yeah, I got you. So I guess everything now is just kind of like kids aren't playing it. So it's kind of more of a, a hidden fear for like adults, basically, with this movie. Basically, if you talk to any adult like in their 20s or 30s, they probably have a fond memory of going to like an arcade or a Chuck E. Cheese, you know. That's the thing, too. We can't even think of any other places that are similar to Chuck E. Cheese. There's none that exist. Well, we have boomers, but I think boomers and, like, um, where's the other one? Well, this is more specific to, like, our area. Right, um, right. It was called The Boardwalk, which was very similar, but they didn't have the animatronics or the mascots. That's they what just I'm had saying. The games. Having the mascot is, like, a whole thing. Yeah, It's that's probably, true. like, a monopoly in, like, Chuck E. Cheese's world. Yeah. Um, but these things, like, this... This movie works because it works on the fear of, like, you know, being a kid and seeing the animatronics for the first time. And having them, like, mysteriously attack you sounds fucking terrifying as a kid. Because you're already kind of scared that the guy in the suit's going to be touching you. Yeah, right. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Yikes. Yeah. But this has some good gore. I love the uh, oil. I, that it was a nice touch. It was a nice touch. But I want to know what are some of your favorite scenes from the movie, if you have any. Hmm. Um, probably when he beats the fuck out of those animatronics near the end when he's handcuffed, because he, he straight up just headbutts one of them, oh, and then yeah. like crushes her head with his fucking thighs, <laughs> and then like you just find out that he could have just escaped at any time and just decides to do it later, and just, he just like, wanted to be cool. Yeah, he just wanted to be cool. He even like kicks the little jukebox behind him to start the music. Yeah, that shit was hilarious. I think my favorite scene is when, um. Some kids are getting murdered and she's like, help me, help me. And his watch goes off 
And instead of helping her, he just, oh, time for my break. And he just leaves the scene entirely. Yeah, he's like, here's the switchblade. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. I also love the long take shot of the soda cans. Just seeing that progressively go as he gets down on the 12-pack. Sauce. I wonder if that, that stuff was, like, custom made for, it was. for the movie. It has, its, it has a name. I need to figure it out. Yeah. Um, I think mine was probably the 80s pinball montage. Yeah, he looks so stoked. Even more so now that I know that was completely unscripted. Like he kind of just did that, and then they're like, "We're keeping it." Yeah, you know, what? let's 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 develop this a little bit more. Right. They they got so stoked on how how good he just handled it. They were like, "We need to have this." <laughs> did you find the fucking the name of the energy drink? Uh, I did. I got it. go for it. This shit's oh. hilarious. It's called Punch. Punch. Oh my god. You it's, want to talk about the, the text on the little, can? A little quote. A fistful of caffeine for your kisser. <laughs> 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 on the can. Oh my god. It's such a weird fucking thing. I wonder if that's just a joke in a joke. Probably. Because it's like not only is it like punch, but he ends up just punching the shit out of everything. Kicking ass. It's why he's so fucking high strung. Because he's just on caffeine, right. energy drinks the whole time. I also know that you could get a Willy's Wonderland crew t-shirt from the director's yeah. website right now. Yeah, you can actually buy one when I kind of want one, not going to lie. Oh, <laughs> That's just dope. Shit, Christmas is coming. All right, what would you guys rate this film? Hmm. 10 out of 10. Dang, what? really? You're going to give it a 10? Fuck it. 10 out of 10. Oh. I know it's not supposed to be taken seriously, and that makes it all the more better. Okay. That's fair. I want to give it like an 8.5, like a 9, just because like I didn't go into it with any expectations, and so I was not disappointed. And then the usual complaints are going to be like, you know, very light on plot, but I wasn't watching this for the plot. I was watching it to see Nick Cage go fucking nuts, and uh, that's what he did, and that's what you got out of the movie, so I'm, I'm down with it. As the third iteration for Nick Cage's new horror ventures, I'm going to give this like an eight. I'm going to place it last on that list, though. Right. Yeah. It's in, By comparison to the other stuff he's done, it's not nearly as like good. Compared to Mandy, your color out of space, yeah. not as good, but it is a, it is very much reminiscent of a grindhouse flick that is super cheesy. Yeah. And it shouldn't be taken seriously at all. I mean, it's Nick Cage killing animatronic creatures, doesn't say a single line, is hopped up on fucking caffeine. Like... Yeah, I don't know if I need to say anything else because it's so funny. Oh, how weird. Hot Topic is selling the t-shirt. Oh, that's great. Shout out Hot Topic. I you know, Hot Topic, but I hate Hot Topic. Rest in peace when they were actually cool. Yeah, uh, right. <laughs> they, they, You know what happened? They sold out. Damn. <laughs> okay, so when are we going to have the abandoned Hot Topic fucking horror movie? <laughs> That's such a good Yo, idea. you know what? They haven't done a movie that's like in a mall, like that stays in the mall and doesn't just start there and leaves. Because the new um, shopping mall. Ooh, Dad, was it in the mall the whole time though? Yeah, that it starts with them. All right, then I have, stand corrected. They, they have sex in a fucking mattress store. Is that the one with the giant chainsaw? It's the one with the robots that have giant chainsaws and like lasers. <laughs> yeah okay then yeah i'm fucking wrong that, that that like that's it though like that's that's the one movie yeah you right <laughs> <laughs> but I, i'm talking about like uh no you know what shit yeah they kind of already did it i mean dawn of the dead has it for the majority of the film that's true huh yo that was okay up. fine tell, tell me your idea Zombie Just pitch it to me. i fucking lost it already <laughs> you My said goodness. okay maybe i'll give it back to you you said it has to be within a mall but only in a mall uh, yeah, I fucking lost it. And we it's were talking gone. about hot topic. It's gone. If not, okay. Anyways, does anyone have any final notes? <laughs> <laughs> Don't eat the pizza. Yeah, fuck. Oh man. Yeah, if, yeah. Go check out Yo, that fucking hour. Didn't long Chuck video. E. Cheese close? Like, aren't they all closed? They're now? still around. They're still running yeah. somehow. Okay, I thought I'm pretty was... sure they're just money laundering spots at this point. Yeah, I thought this was like a like a. a family fun center situation like the rocky and bullwinkle shit that just like closed oh you know what i do have an, an extra fucking note if you want something as ridiculous as this check out the banana splits movie um what's it about okay so basically a bunch of uh people in hollywood were deciding what to do with 
some of the original characters from the Banana Splits band that was made by Hanna Barbera. Oh, yeah. You know, like the little, like the monkey and the elephant yeah, and all that. Yeah, yeah. And so some new people in Hollywood were like, fuck it, let's just make a horror movie out of them. And they use the Saturday morning cartoons as the prota- or as the antagonist in this fucking horror movie. And they kill all types of people in that shit. And it's hilarious. I love it. It reminds me of this because the animatronics with the giant suit, but it's also funny to see a Hanna-Barbera creature attack people with chainsaws or like <laughs> an axe. I don't know. It's funny. Imagine Johnny Bravo fucking stabbing the shit out of somebody. Oh. <laughs> Come, on the fuck? Come on, baby. Do the monkey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I'm going to end it there. I'm going to end right. it there. I want to get my coat. Yeah, oh yeah. We got to walk out real quick. You got your keys? Yeah, I got the keys. All right. We are bringing down the grindhouse, a podcast where you just listen to more media. <laughs> I butchered that. <laughs> uh, thank you for checking out the episode. If you'd like to support us, check out our Patreon, where for $2 a month, you can subscribe and give us a horror movie or a piece of media that we can review and we'll take it into consideration. Shout out to this month's Patreon. Patrons? Patrons. <laughs> We love you. Patron. <laughs> Patron. <laughs> yes. Excuse you. I like that better. Yes. Yeah. Blood for our Patron. Uh, if you haven't, check us out on our social media pages. We have the Instagram, the Twitter, and the Facebooks. Uh, we're going to get around to posting more episodes. We've been a little slow uh, recently, but yeah, we're picking up. Cool things oh, in man. development, not for the podcast, just in our personal <laughs> it's life. It's entirely my fault because I'm. He's a, making a short I'm film. I'm making y'all. a short film. Consider this the first advertisement for Yeah, I like haven't even had a chance to tell anybody on the podcast about it or anyone who's listening. So yeah, shit. Making a short film. You'll see it. It'll, oh it'll, shit! Is that famous director Jonathan Satella? <laughs> you talking about writer, director, producer Literally, Jonathan Satella? <laughs> got fucking one more day of shooting, and then we're gonna start putting it up places. So I'll link it out once it's uh, once it's ready and submitted to festivals and shit. You guys can watch it. Oh yeah. It's going to be awesome. Also, check out our merch. It's on a leak tree in our Instagram bio. Buy it. Buy it. Buy it. Buy it. All right, I'm done. I'm tired. Let's wow. go. Next one. All right. <laughs> I'm Mer. I'm Justine. And I'm Jonathan. Thank you. Woo!